52 years ago this month, the world held its breath as the Soviet Union launched the first man into space. His name was Yuri Gagarin. He was just 27 years old and became an instant hero. Since then, more than 500 people have followed his path into space, most of them superbly fit and trained for the job. Until now, it's been an adventure reserved for the elite, but that may soon be changing as we count down to the launch of a new industry, space tourism for the masses. It was the 1960s, the Cold War, and a test of science, technology, and human capability. The first space race spun the world into an aura of wonder. But today, there is a new space race, a new industry, and new players. What we want to do is open up spaceflight to humanity. Affordable and reliable space transportation. The new finish line is making space travel accessible to everyone. And two companies with two distinct spaceships are leading the pack. Excor Aerospace, maker of the Lynx. This is cozy. Yeah. And Virgin Galactic with its Spaceship Two. The latter is a company created by Richard Branson. This is a spaceship factory. This is a place that's going to build spaceships. His spaceship, built for six passengers and two pilots, will take you on a two-hour journey for $200,000. According to Virgin Galactic CEO George Whitesides, more than 500 people have put down a deposit. We have more people signed up to fly to space than have ever flown to space in the last 50 years of space flight. The Lynx, by contrast, is the coupe model of spaceships built for two, pilot and passenger. So you ignite the four engines. And, and 15 seconds later, you're off the ground. It's smaller and cheaper. CEO Jeff Grayson says a ticket on the Lynx will run you about $100,000. A lot of people think that traveling into space is still years, years, years away. To that you say... They're wrong. <laughs> Both spaceships take off horizontally, soar to 100 kilometers above ground, and offer a few minutes of weightlessness. You'll be looking down at the, at the blue earth and seeing the edge of the atmosphere down there below you. If it's any indication how real this possibility has become, Unilever, the parent company of Axe Body Spray, has purchased 22 tickets aboard the Lynx and is giving them away as part of a new contest. Join now at axapollo.com for your chance to go to space. Still, two big questions remain. What if? You're saying there are risks. There are risks, clearly. That we can make it much safer than government spaceflight has been, and it could still be one of the riskier things that people are likely to do in the course of an ordinary lifetime. We hope to get to space by the end of the year, and we hope to start commercial operations soon after that. The race is not with our competitors. It's with physics. There are some who say space travel is still hype. Richard Branson previously predicted a 2007 launch date, a delay which prompted one of his first customers to reportedly ask for a refund. If and when Virgin Spaceship does take off, it will be from here. In the middle of the New Mexico desert at Spaceport America. A complex built specifically to take tourists into space. So we really built a whole city out here. Um, and really nobody's lived out here for many, many years. Old frontier meets the new frontier, I like to say. <laughs> Christine Anderson heads up the facility. Nothing was here. We had to put water in. Uh, we had to put all the power in, the communications in. We had to build the road in just to get the equipment in. The launch site, complete with 12,000-foot runway, cost $209 million, a bill funded by the taxpayers of New Mexico. 
So the taxpayers of New Mexico literally own this building? They do. Two counties increased their taxes Correct. to build, to build this. this facility. In the middle of the recession. So when I got this job, I thought, boy, there's no pressure here to make this thing successful, right? I mean, because I'm a taxpayer, too. So. And will it be? Uh, yes, it will be. It will be successful. It's estimated Spaceport America will bring in 2,000 jobs by 2016, an industry many are hoping to get a piece of. Including the town of Truth or Consequences, a sleepy community of 7,000, just 40 minutes down the road from the spaceport. A town that's hurting for jobs. John Mulcahy is the mayor. Well, what's the average salary? Well, the, the, the average salary is about $13 an hour. So you, you can take a look at that and extrapolate that for an annual salary. The median household income, meaning you look at a rooftop and you see everybody in there, it's about twenty-seven five. And they say the average salary in the space industry is? $96,000 a year. It's a big jump. It's a huge jump. Already, a Holiday Inn has sprung up at the entrance to town. And beside it, a gravel lot is soon to be transformed into a welcome center. You're expecting tens of thousands of people will come to this site. In the course of a year, absolutely. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see 3,000 people in a week or even a weekend. We're really looking forward to the economic opportunity, the job creation, the economic development that will come with a project like that. And we're excited about it. Space tourism. It straddles fact and fantasy and makes a lot of promises. But first, we have to get there. Next, meet the man who owns the moon. Then on my business card, it says, Dr. Dennis M. Hope, head cheese. Of? The Lunar Embassy. We've been doing it since the beginning of time, looking up. But only a select few have ever looked down onto Earth. Now, that may be changing as space travel is marketed to the average consumer. The Adventure Travel Company in Toronto started offering trips to space earlier this year. Your wait list for about four to five minutes. And Sergio Pio could be one of its first customers. Wow, I, I love it. Sergio's predecessors, the ultra-rich, like Guy La Liberté and Dennis Tito, spent up to $35 million getting to space. Sergio will pay much less, $100,000, for his five minutes in space. When I was five, I was saying that I want to be an astronaut. And, and people laugh, you know, like it's, it's something, hey, look at the moon. And now it's real. I can be part of this. But reaching space is only the beginning. Once people get there, they may need a place to stay. Robert Bigelow, the man behind a chain of hotels in the US, is now marketing inflatable space habitats, while a team of Dutch entrepreneurs is looking for volunteers to begin the first human colony on Mars. Mars One will establish human settlement on Mars in 2023. Good afternoon, Lunar Embassy and Galactic Government Headquarters. May I help you? But perhaps the most curious is the work of California's Dennis Hope. Well, it's $19.99 plus $1.51 planetary tax. His claim is literally out of this world. Then on my business card, it says Dr. Dennis M. Hope, head cheese. Of? The Lunar Embassy. He says he owns the moon. I file a claim of ownership with the only organization on planet Earth that has the legal right to make laws for deep space, and that's the United Nations. And what did they say? In 1967, they wrote the Outer Space Treaty. Article 2 of that treaty states, no nation by appropriation shall have sovereignty or control over any of the satellite bodies. Nowhere in the treaty does it mention individuals. It's a loophole Dennis has made the most of. For the past 32 years, he's been selling acres of land on the moon for $20, plus 
planetary tax, of course. And business is good. How you doing? Oh, you'd like five properties? I have six million property owners. We're doing 220 properties per day currently in this economy. I have three former presidents of the United States. I have politicians from every country on the planet. I have 675 celebrities that own property. I have 1,800 major corporations that have purchased land from us, including the Hilton and Marriott hotel chains. We contacted the Marriott and they told us that they did not buy property from you. Well, I have in my database at, at the Lunar Embassy, we have a deed that went to the Marriott hotel chain in 1999. So they are property owners, whether or not they are recognizing it, I don't know why they would do that, but they are property owners. How much money have you made? Mm, just under $11 million. You're a millionaire? I guess that would equate, yeah. But it doesn't stop at the moon. Dennis has claimed all the planets, except Earth, as his own. He also formed the galactic government with himself as president. In 2001, I received about 163,000 emails from different property owners that we had wanting to know how on earth we were ever going to protect these properties from earth-based governments. And after thinking about it for about three or four days, the only logical conclusion we could come to is we needed to have our own democratic republic nation. So we created the galactic government. Dennis is also preparing for life on the moon. He created a currency called the Delta, wrote a constitution, and is working on building a spaceship to shuttle landowners. We'll build a craft that'll handle up to 400 people and or equipment that we can take to the moon. And the trip should take about 30 minutes. His pitch is so enticing, even we couldn't resist picking up an acre. Yes, and thank you very much. It's welcome aboard as a citizen. Thank you very much. This is a deed. It's a physical description of the specific piece of property that you own. Well, I am now the owner of a piece of land on the moon, area J6, quadrant golf, lot number 20 slash 0719. Correct. See this crater right here? Your property is right there. How do you pick where somebody gets their property? It's a really scientific way we do this. It's, um, well, I'll just show you. We do this, and then we go like this. And if the area isn't sold, we'll, and if it is, we'll pick another area. There, we'll sell that area. You, you shut your eyes and point. Yes. Why not? Oh, what difference does it make? It's all beach. But remember the loophole Dennis said he found in the UN treaty? Turns out it may not be as ironclad as he thinks. Ram Jaku is a professor of air and space law at McGill University. No, it's not possible for uh, one person or persons or even state to own the moon it's under the current international law. It's not the first time someone has tried to claim ownership of space. Back in 2001, Gregory Nemitz sent NASA a parking ticket for a satellite that landed on his asteroid. NASA declined to pay. Humans do things for a number of reasons, and logic has generally missing in those kind of things. Is what you're doing fraud? No. Why would it be fraud? I've had a lot of individuals that are a lot smarter than I am that think that I can't do this. Well, the reality is very different. I am doing it, and I continue to do it, and I'm going to continue doing it. Whether snapping up tickets to space with no departure date or buying an acre of land on the moon, people will continue to be captivated by the promise of the skies and the possibility of space. I think the human spirit is one that's always been adventurous. We're never satisfied with being the status quo. We always want to reach out further than we can. We're just providing a basis by which people can look to the future. Next, the charming and disarming world. Oh, why, hello. Here we go, ready? I'm like scared for my television life. Can we do this again? This is my whole bad side. Of Christopher Wall. 